Oh, I have a clicker, so just yeah, I don't think you can roll. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. So you can you can walk and <laughs> So, welcome everybody. Uh, I would like to introduce you uh, Ronit Weissmel Manner. Is it good pronunciation? Uh, the, the best I've uh, <laughs> heard. Okay, she, she, is from, uh, she has a PhD from Cornell University and she now works uh, in Israel and she will talk about dual earners couples and she analyzed data from the European Social Survey and uh, we will be happy also to hear about Czech Republic because oh, you, I think you will tell me about it more than I can. You will help me to interpret the results. <laughs> okay, so I'm really happy to be here and thank you so much for making this happen, Alice. <laughs> and uh, okay, sorry. So from what I understand, I'm going to talk for an hour and then if you have questions, but of course if something is unclear, please raise your hand. I don't know, Israelis are very informal, I don't know how it is here, so just feel free to, to ask questions and uh, I'll be happy to answer whatever I can. This is the research that is going on, I haven't written the paper yet, but you have the results and I can do more analysis, so feedback is very, very welcome here <laughs> at this point. So, as uh, you just said, this is uh, based on um, analysis of 2010. Uh, European Social Survey. I'll tell you uh, in very soon why this one specifically. And um, <laughs> and another thing before I start is really that um, this is about dual earner couples, okay? Either married or, or living with a partner. And I want to ask you before I start a, a quick question. I don't know what's uh, your uh, marital situation or whatever. I know for one couple here, especially, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, this is something I've been doing a little uh, survey here in different uh, lectures I'm giving. And I'm asking, you know, it becomes, I don't know, what, when do you end your work day usually here? In Israel, it could be at 8 o'clock, right? But let's say it's 4 or 5 uh, p.m. and you have kids and you both are working, the, the, the partners, and um, well, it's time to go and take the kids from daycare. If they are in daycare, in Israel they are until four usually, four or five, and then is that call from your spouse saying, mm, I need to finish something, please, why don't you go and pick up the kids? I just need to finish something, I need to stay for another hour, is it okay? And the question is for, for you is, what do you think? It's usually that conversation or the conversation is, oh, I really go and pick up the kids from daycare. I want to go, I want to go, I want to do it. <laughs> do you mind? <laughs> it's usually the conversation of, I need to finish something, I need to work, I need to finish my work, and not the, the other way around, right? I mean, even if you don't have kids, but I imagine the way our lives are around work, uh, you understand what I'm saying. And this is a really interesting thing because usually surveys and other, uh, you know, whatever we think about it, we want to work usually less. We, we work many hours and usually prefer to work few hours. So why is it that in day-to-day -day life, we actually want to continue working, want to keep for another hour or more? To, to finish our work or go home and then continue working on the laptop. So this is my, what my um, agenda here is to think about it. Why is that? Why is that that people prefer to work more, they, they are working, uh, but they work more hours um, and feel that they don't really have the time, right? That feeling of time squeeze. So this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to I want to understand from a different perspective 
that most people take and take a, what I call a couple level perspective and look at this issue of the preference to work fewer hours as something that happens at the, at the couple level between spouses, not just at the individual level like we are used to in different studies. <laughs> and um, the idea is that with the data, I'm going to look at the couple level, and this is why I'm using the 2010, not because there are couples, of course, there are individuals in a situation where they are married to another working spouse, but because in that survey, the other question then, how many hours do you prefer to work? It was also asked, how many hours do you prefer your spouse, your partner to work? So for the first time, I can use a European study, a large scale study, to look at the questions of how you see not just your own work life and your uh, preference for work hours, but also at the couple unit. So how much hours do you prefer both of you to work or do you just, um, it's just not just an individual level when you're living with another partner. So uh, this is going to be again just about couples, married or partner couples and so this is as I see it as a challenge at the, at the family level not an individual thing and I'm going to look so at the work hours or something that it work hours, couples uh, work hours as the um, one of the factors other than um, the welfare regimes. I'm going to look at the, co at the country level or state level uh, right now. So let's dip in. Why? Why is it important? Why? I think it's important because I think work hours are a major issue. But <laughs> um, other than what the economists say, it's not just... I mean, economists think there's no problem, right? I mean, the, the, many, the hours you want to work, that's, that's what you're working. But we know from the data that this is not the case, right? Um, and uh, it is a well-known uh, gap between actual and preferred work hours. It depends very much on the survey. It's interesting to, to say right now already that in the European Social Survey, the question was asked not ideally how many hours would you prefer not taking into consideration uh, your economic situation, but taking into account the way that the question is framed is that you would sacrifice salary for those amount, number of hours you would prefer to work. So it's not some ideal, I want to just work two hours a day, but taking into account that you're going to have less income. So that's important to remember when we analyze the results and remember this is maybe a very conservative estimate of the preferences uh, in Europe of uh, couples about their work hours. <coughs> so the estimate again range from 6 to 50, it really depends which survey uh, you look at and that feeling of uh, time squeeze is really has many, many social ramifications, and this is why I'm interested in this issue. Uh, I see myself as a sociologist of work and family. I study um, my PhDs in organizational behavior, okay, so I'm also an organizational sociologist, and usually I take a very feminist and gender perspective and frameworks to analyze what happens in organizations. So it affects well-being at different levels, right, at the individual level, affect family, con work family conflict, it affects um, uh, job satisfaction, so it affects also um, our health, but really also uh, what I'm interested in is also to understand how it affects gender inequality, because we know, as I'm going to talk about right now, that it will be gendered, this pattern of work hours arrangements and preferences. They're not going to be very similar. Any questions so far? So, so good. Okay. So this is why I'm interested in that and uh, why. So the, the question is really a very broad question. Okay. Why people prefer to work a uh, few hours is really a very big question, right? It, it's probably not something you can easily explain because it, it, it relates to factors at the individual level, the organization level social expectations, the state, social policy, many, many things. But I want to take a very, very broad sociologist perspective. 
Uh, I'm saying it's sociologists. Most of you, I imagine, are sociologists, but I'm used to also talk to people from different disciplines, so sorry about that. But the life course perspective um, is, is, a, is a perspective I use often in uh, relation to working families. And the, why we have this gap between work hours and, and work hour preferences, I think it's because of what we call the structural lag or the work family structural lag. And what does it mean, this structural lag? Very broadly, it suggests that workers are confronting a period of structural lag, but, which is defined as a time when institutionalized costumes and practices <coughs> Uh, persist in the face of changing realities. And what are these changing realities and what are these institutionalized uh, perspectives when we talk about work family structural lab? It, we, it means that practices, organizational practices, expectations, are still based on the ideal worker, right? The, what is that ideal worker? He's a male usually, he's the person who is all committed to his work, okay? I, w I wonder how much I need to go into that, so help me out here. Is this is a familiar concept or not? Yes, no? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. That's, I can go faster. And um, when we put work first, of course, and assume that somebody else uh, take care of the family, when we're talking about dual earner uh, couples, that's of course where the problem exists, between what the organization expects and, and wants you to behave, and realities, right? I mean, most uh, three-quarter of, du of uh, working families are work uh, families where both spouses are working. So it's very different than the idea that you have to work and have no or very few um, family or personal um, arrangements or responsibilities. And in that case, work hours usually represent that structural lag, right? That, that really is the fundamental thing here. Um, that uh, you have to work many hours, but the reality is that you have other things to do and time is a limited resource. So how do we bridge that in day-to-day -day life, right? So here is the challenge for couples, is in confronting this structural lag, what strategies are they taking to be as effective as they can be? I mean, what can they do as a couple, as a family, to uh, have the work arrangements that is best for them? Uh, and I look at it as something that we could look at the preferences as, as that kind of... Uh, um, idea to represent that, whether they feel the time squeeze or not, depending on their um, arrangements. So just to um, go through the literature, what we know about this so far, and why, what my, my research um, contributes. So it's really interesting that when I got into this topic, and I've already written one paper on that, um, with um, a partner uh, from the Haifa University, Asaf Lebanon, is that when I uh, did the research on what the literature has to say about preferences for reduced hours, so first of all I discovered there are plenty of research, but looking at the, um, the preferences as the one who is causing all this trouble to everyone at the individual level, at the couple level, the work for family conflict. So, it's clear that it's very important to look at these preferences because the consequences are really um, bad. <laughs> but very few research that examine um, what contributes uh, to these preferences. To why do people feel that they have to, they want to reduce these work hours? And whatever I looked, it was just economists writing papers, no theoretical background, nothing at all. And uh, first of all, most of the studies that sociologists have written were at the individual level. So they just looked at the individual and his work, our um, arrangement and preferences. <coughs> Other researchers uh, took a comparative analysis, very few, I mean, what, what you see here is basically what I found. It's not actually just an example. These are the papers, there are two, three papers um, that did use 
comparative um, um, data and look at uh, the other um, factor that I'm looking at, the welfare regimes. Usually there it was looking at the GDP or something like that, very specific things. <coughs> and at the couple level, what I'm taking in this paper, I have seen these, um, these studies, but they are all in one country. So there is no a comparative study that looked at this relationship between actual work hours and the preferences to work fewer hours. You probably have a question why, <laughs> or you might not, why am I studying preference to work fewer hours? Especially I think here maybe in the Czech Republic, now that I'm thinking about my results, and not about the preference to work more, right? That's a, that's a good question, or just the preference, or being satisfied, right? That's another option. Well, there are, there are, we can talk about that later, but basically that's the main thing, right? I mean, most people in some countries, <laughs> uh, but not all, and that's really uh, interesting to see, uh, usually that's, that's the issue, the time squeeze. Not the preference to work more hours, but they can't. But that's definitely a very important and, and something sh that should be addressed, but I'm not addressing it in this paper. We can talk about that later uh, on. So, um, as I said, so my contribution is that I'm taking a couple level, not an individual uh, perspective. Why is that important for who is, is not um, using life course perspective or family studies? Basically, it's very basic, right? I mean, I mean for me, it's work hours, uh, we, we know we negotiate that with our boss. <laughs> Why are we not taking into account the fact that we also negotiate that with our partner? And that's usually not addressed as an issue, as something that affects our preferences for work hours or the number of hours we actually work. So that's another uh, important thing. And um, the other thing is, as I said, that no one had used the comparative perspective and looked at how welfare regimes can affect, the, and again, another context that can affect preferences for working less hours. What's my theoretical background? So I'm, as, as I said, I'm merging two issues. One thing is the, the, taking a couple level perspective, and the other thing is the uh, comparative study of welfare regimes. So the first thing I'm going to look at is, of course, uh, the life course perspective I already mentioned, that is one um, type of theoretical background that is really important in my study, and the social construction of gender, of course. So the, the way we look to, I took these two concepts from uh, the life course perspective, one is the linked life, this is how we call it, the relationship, but the context that, uh, through which we um, um, run our lives, and in this context is between spouses. And of course the social construction of gender, that this linked life happens within a specific context with specific gender norms and expectations by society, those um, still persistent breadwinner, uh, homemaker uh, norms, even though both spouses are working. So this is what we call the new traditional couples, where both are working, but still the husband's working many more hours than the female. This is a study of heterosexual couples. That's another uh, thing uh, to say here. So the other thing is, when we talk about linked life, is that also we talk about the strategies. This is a word uh, used by um, Moen and Wennington in their um, paper in 99. And basically, is the adaptation within that context. So how do we manage? What do we do? And what is more effective when we do it? Is it better and we'll feel less time squeezed when we are in that new traditional arrangement? Or is it better to just be equal, working fewer hours, both of us, I don't know, working 30 hours a week, both partners, that would be better, and you'll feel less of the stress and ramifications of work hours? So they have to negotiate it 
in that context of struggle, structural lag. And therefore, the question is, how do couples work hour arrangements relate to individuals' preferences for reduced work hours for themselves and their partners? Okay, so this brings me to that question. And my hypothesis, as you can <laughs> tell from uh, the story I've been telling you so far, is that I expect individuals in dual owner couples to desire couple-level work hour arrangement that most closely reproduce the homemaker breadwinner model. <laughs> Questions? Why I think that's the case? Not happy about it, but I think that would be the case. That's what the data is going to show. <laughs> okay, so this is part one. Part two, as I said, I'm taking a uh, comparative uh, analysis of work family uh, policies, and I'm here building on Gornick and Mayer's um, analysis of uh, work uh, family policies and regimes. And what do I mean by that? I mean, for those who are familiar with the, 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 the literature about welfare regimes, <laughs> it's usually be talking about the liberals, the conservative countries, and the um, social democrats, right? Those three. Where do we put the Czech Republic? Where do we put Israel? There's no theory. <laughs> Basically, there is no theoretical papers dealing with many, many countries. So you'll see how I dealt with it. If you have other ideas, I would be happy to hear uh, how to do it. But um, basically, the idea behind Gornick and Mayer's um, uh, paper and, um, and um, classifications are, first of all, what are work family policies, right? I didn't explain, sorry. So I mean by that uh, maternity leave, either paid or unpaid, subsidized uh, daycare, um, limiting the number of hours, laws that limit the number of hours you can work if there are any uh, uh, kind of those. So that, I mean those things. I don't mean um, policies such as um, like we have in Israel. I'm not sure how much you have here. The um, unemployment um, salary you get if you don't work. That's not that. I'm not talking about the decommodification uh, policies. I'm talking about more of the policies that are usually called the defamilization, where it comes and helps. Um, help me if you understand what I'm talking about. I, I'm not sure what's the level here, uh, if it's to get into more details or less details. But th basically, that, that's the distinction being made uh, based on uh, Esping and uh, Anderson, and Esping Anderson uh, classification, where other policies, like I just mentioned, as work family policies, are basically meant. Uh, to um, help with uh, inequality, the gender inequality in the workplace. But what I'm claiming here is that it's not just about that, but it also, the when we're talking about uh, couples who are in the same household, it also helps the family um, to deal better with the work-family conflict. So if a wife goes to work, it doesn't just help her, it helps everyone in the family. That's the idea. So. They intend to reduce dependency of mostly women, but also um, can help with um, to affect those preferences, right? So in countries like, <laughs> you know, the Denmark or Norway and social democratic um, um, regimes, um, people should be less inclined to feel they are, or they might. <laughs> prefer to work uh, more hours because policies can protect them. So do more develop work family policies fast. Okay, this is wrong, right? It should not be here facilitate couples, individuals, any dual earner couples' preferences for themselves and their spouses. Even I fall into that trap of thinking I have a couple data, but I don't have a couple data. I have, I had previously, I, I used, uh, these kind of data sets, but not this one. Um, facilitate a couple's desired work hours, and the hypothesis that is the greater the development of work family policies in a country, the less likely are individuals and dual the couples to prefer reduced work hours for themselves and their spouses. OK? 
Okay, any questions? Go on, Let's show the data. <laughs> okay. So, just to sum up, my theoretical contribution in this paper is that it's a couple-centered approach, conceptualizing the time squeeze at the couple level, couple level work arrangement. I see them as work family strategies where couples can adapt and decide what to do with these work hours in order to feel more or less um, time squeezed. And that is also looking at comparative sociological research of work family policies in the same study. Okay, 2010, <laughs> that specific study, uh, 28 countries participated, Israel participated in that and also the Czech Republic. Uh, I had to, not Israel and the Czech Republic let go, but other uh, countries where the data was, you know, few, very few Cyprus and other countries where there were not enough cases uh, to analyze. All my couples are working, a couple, all of them are uh, working, living with a working partner, ages 18 to 64, which left me with the number you see here, which also says a little bit about what kind of analysis I could do or could not do. I wish I could do more, but it's just that, okay? Um, so now it's a little complicated, but not too much. I'll, I'll lead you through how I created my independent and dependent uh, variables. It's just not that complicated, but it's really merging a couple of questions from the survey into one dependent variable. So preferences for reduced work hours based on four questions from the survey. How many, two questions about actual work hours over yourself and your spouse and two questions about your preferences, uh, I'm sorry, actual and preferences, right? And preferences are for yourself and how many hours would you like your partner to work? Again, remember it's not written. Taking into consideration that you would earn less <laughs> if you work less hours, okay? So merging these two, table two by two. So my dependent variable has four categories, right? whether you prefer um, not to reduce your work hours for yourself and a spice, either one or reducing for both. Okay? So this is what I think the next slide really shows the importance of looking at a family perspective and not taking individual perspective like other studies have done before. So if you just look at the individual level and you analyze the frequencies of these two categories, so the blue is you want to reduce. You, oh, of course, I do everything separately for men and women, of course, okay? But that's another interesting thing for my findings. Um, so women's are on this side and men reports are on this side. But, and they're not the same couples, different couples, but all of them in dual earner couples. You see how many wants to work fewer hours? This is all Europe, right? It's the old question, 20 question. Um, it's pretty interesting, many of them, right? So it's really a big issue. Remember that the uh, not reduce includes uh, two groups. Those are that are satisfied or those that want to work more hours, but there are not that many in the survey, okay? I can't do everything in this study. I think it's really important to look at that group, but in this study, they are grouped together. Most of them are satisfied, okay? Just so you'll know. And when you look at the couple level, here is what we see, and this is what's really important to look at, that um, slide, because not reduced for either one are only about 30%, men and women, the same countries, not the same couples in Europe, says that they are either fine or want to work more. But if you look at the couple level, how you feel at the family level, the time squeeze, it's not just about you want to work fewer hours. You want your spouse to work fewer hours or you feel that you both want to. You want both of them to work less. And that's most people. <laughs> That's what's really interesting. So you see, the, if, we, if we look at it in this way, we see that the problem of the time squeeze is worse than we have thought it is so far when we just looked at the individual 
level. Okay? Questions? Yes. I have a question concerning uh, the formulation. Because uh, I think uh, the previous slide was written, that you're asking about uh, your partner, whether the partner would like uh, to reduce the hours. No, not partner. the partner. Whether you want your partner to reduce okay. his yeah. or her hours. Yeah. Not, not. Yeah. Okay. Sorry if I said it incorrectly, but okay. Okay, anything else? It's quite amazing, I think, to, to see things a little differently when we look at the same data, but looking at it merged uh, like that. Let's go uh, forward to uh, my one of my depend independent variables, the couple's work hour arrangement. So here it is based, of course, about the reports that each the person gave about his work hours and uh, his partner's work hours and um, clearly I couldn't use it as a continuous variable, right? I mean, based on what we know about the norms and everything, I had to create cate categories and I used Klarnberg and uh, Moen 2001 paper on the United States where they created that kind of categories, but I had to do some adjustments. <laughs> you know why? That was a real issue. How, where to set the cutoff point, uh, where I'm talking about so many different countries, the very different laws and expectations about number of hours, and um, I had to look through so many, well, you, you can imagine, to understand, because in Israel, 30 hours uh, per week, on average, does not con is not considered a full-time job. Is it here? No. But in many other countries and many other studies, that's the cutoff point. So I used what most researchers use, and I also checked. I did some checking to see if it's 35 or, or uh, 25. But it didn't really change the results anyway. But based on that and our um, understanding of um, the gender expectations, I, you can see I merged some of the categories. I don't have nine categories. First of all, this category wasn't very big, which means, which is, says a lot, right? That the husband, what really defines this category is not the number of hours the wife is working, uh, and the female is working, but how many hours the, the male is working. So the, in this group, remember that are also women who are working very long hours, okay? New traditional, I explained to you, it's what's usually considered following, being working both of you, but different hours, the wife is working part-time at most, and the husband is working well, normal hours, if you might say, 30 to 44. I mean, we wish, right, to be working that many hours, but that's the case. And then um, long hours, Traditional is where the husband is also working more hours than the wife. She's working, again, part-time, but he's working very long hours. Dual career couples is the couples I call the ones who are both working normal hours. Long hours, dual career, both of them are working long hours, but here you can see that it's, it's one group where the wife is working full-time, but not long hours with, so remember there, two groups of women in the long hours careers, and one last and very small group where the wife is the main provider. How am I doing with the time? Sorry, <laughs> I want to stop. We still have time. Good, perfect. Um, so I can tell you I, I have another paper I wrote about the, the, whether the provider role, how it affects um, men and women's uh, um, satisfaction with work and family. And this is based on actual couple level data. And in that study from the States, this is data I have from, also from my dissertation, where we found that, again, this expectations about who is going to be the provider still prevalent and affect satisfaction, especially the male satisfaction of work, um, less so of family. But the optimistic uh, reality is when the wife earns more than, the, or equally earns as much as the husband, she feels more um, uh, satisfied with her career in comparison to women who earns less than their husbands. So something good to, to tell, because this is not such a great 
story here. <laughs> but there are other studies, studies where we can find other results. So how does this look like when we uh, look at the distribution based on the 2010 European Social Survey? Again, these are different families, but you can see very similar pattern. Most couples, the blue and the, the dark blue, are couples where both are either working full-time or full-time long hours. Very different than uh, what we saw earlier. So we already see the gap, the difference between what we actually do and what we prefer to do. Um, how many new traditional do we have that the wife really works very, very few hours? And that's where our theory comes from, that we think this is the, this group of people will be the least likely to feel the time squeeze, will be the least likely to prefer to work fewer hours. There aren't that many of them. 16 based on uh, what women's um, report and 13 based on the men, men's report. Questions? Next, what did they do with the countries? Haha. <laughs> okay, so the, the suspects for the um, social democratic countries, which I use as the reference group, Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden, conservative, Belgium, France, Germany, Netherlands, and the Switzerland, and if you're asking me about Germany, why is it here and not someplace else, we can talk about it later, but I tried also to put it as uh, uh, a more social democrat countries based on changes that happened during that time, but didn't really change the result. Liberal countries, I have Great Britain and Ireland. Mediterranean, I grouped Mediterranean countries. Israel with Spain and Greece, and East European countries, again, no theory, I grouped the Mediterranean and the Eastern European just uh, geographically, no hypothesis here, but let's see what the results show us, and then we'll continue from there, okay? So, controls, lots of controls uh, at the individual level, and I have also controls at the, the country level, um, age, education, children's age, family income, couples occupational status, of course. Here again, you can see I, I measured it as a couple level um, situation. So it's based on being either both or neither, or either one of them. Job control, um, another important, from my perspective, thing to look at. Um, gender ideology and selection into employment and partnership because I just looked at married and partnered couples, so I had to check whether the, there is some selection bias here. There is none. I checked, I can show you the, the graph later. There is no selection bias. At the country level, <sighs> That was a lot of work <laughs> to collect all the data. I didn't all do it myself. I have an assistant. <laughs> um, and um, you could look at them. Again, it's based on what's prevalent in the literature, what to look at. I also did other post hoc measures for other uh, variables. Um, and you can see all of them I took 2008 and did, uh, 2010 average, not just the year of the survey, basically assuming that what happened earlier affects what's actually happening right now. Any questions about that? Yes. I have a technical question. What do you mean by a gender ideology? Oh, um, that's uh, based, I think, on two items. You want me to, to read it out? I can read it out loud? Because I don't remember. Um, you know. Um, you know. <laughs> Sorry I'm saying it like that. Um, I actually do have it. So based on the mean of two uh, measurements, whether women should be prepared to cut down on paid work, 
for the sake of the family, that's one item, and uh, whether men should uh, have more rights to a job than women when jobs are scarce. That's what I call here, okay, and the mean of these two. Any other suggestions <laughs> or any other ideas, I would be happy to um, look into it. Anything else? Keep going, keep going, right? <laughs> Analysis. <laughs> Here it comes. Almost. Um, Multi-level, um, multinominal model, right? I had to do people in countries, so um, and they're all categorical, so it's a multinominal analysis. Separate model for men and women. I first look, I have my base basic model with the controls at the individual level and a couple uh, level uh, a couple uh, work our arrangement as model one model two was the, these controls with also uh, the um, comparative uh, work family regimes and the last one uh, different models taking into taking into account different uh, country level controls right I mean I, I wish I could do everything together but you can't when it's this kind of data so you put each of them, one of them separately and we'll show the results <laughs> but I first want again to, to show some descriptives because it's really complicated this one category with six category uh, one variable with six category the other one with four uh, so first let me show you the data at the individual level okay where separately where these are the women's report, men re men's report uh, for the self and the partner, and the six types of work hour arrangements, right? These different strategies, as I call them, arrangements, where the husband is part time. I don't know, can you see everything from the back? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, dual careers, dual career, okay, here they're working more hours as you go along if you can't see the, the actual labels. But it's really interesting just to look, if, even if you're in the back and see the, the picture that emerges, a very me like a mirror. Whatever the husband says about uh, his particular uh, wife is the same thing that women in different families say about their husbands. So for example, and, and you can see that the, the wave where they want to reduce, so of course if they're working dual uh, in their working long hours, they want to reduce more, right? That's expected. Um, and this similarly uh, goes for the men. So we see that the reduce, the, the blue one, <laughs> is much bigger. But um, what other thing that is interesting, um, if the husband is not working, right? <laughs> The wife says, ah, you're not going to reduce, I want you to, to work more, or just satisfied. Uh, and similarly, that's what the husband says, right, up there. I do have, <laughs> sorry, where do I press? Ah, here, this is similarly, right, if he doesn't work. Near traditional couples, that's interesting, so, or the dual earners, I think to a career where they're both working the same number of hours, but uh, the wife is more likely to say, I want to reduce the number of hours of work, about 50%, 55% of them. And what does the husband say? He also wants her to reduce, but he doesn't feel that she's so squeezed, I think, <laughs> because there are only about 40 something husbands of different wives, right? Remember, that's not the same couples, but just as a trend. Okay, any questions? Now let's look at the picture, the merged picture of both of them, but I took out, it's really too much to put on one slide, only the four major, uh, you know, groups. I took out the husband um, part-time and the wife as a provider because they're very young, they're also small groups. So I have here the neo-traditional, neo-traditional long hours, dual career and dual career by the four categories of preference for reduced hour, either for you, for your wife, for both of us or none. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> 
still complicated to, to, to look at it. But, oh, sorry. Um, oh, where is it? What did I do? Okay. Um, again, what would be, we would expect that if they're working uh, long hours, right? Either one, they would say, the blue, this blue, uh, about 50% say, mm, we prefer that both of us will work fewer hours, right? But you can see that the group of, the red group with, oops, is very small here. That's expected, right? Where would we see a different pattern, a more gendered pa pattern? Um, with dual careers or neo-traditional, are there any differences between what they report? Uh, not that much. Okay, but even in this group, we can see that 70% of people prefer that, uh, says that they don't want to change. All the other ones want to either change for themselves, their spouse, or both of them are unhappy with the work hours arrangements. <coughs> okay, multi-level. Ah, no, sorry. <laughs> Still, the regimes. <coughs> what, again, um, I have these five groups, Mediterranean, Eastern, hmm, I didn't really know, okay, sorry, let's first look at what I hypothesized, right, I expected that uh, in social democrat countries, people would be less likely to say we want to reduce our work hours because they have more um, easier life, sort of, right? because they have more developed work family policies. So you can see that in comparison to the liberal or the conservative, uh, there are more people who say, hmm, I do not want to reduce either for myself or my spouse. Both, you see the same trends. Again, men and women report very similar results. <laughs> what about Eastern? <laughs> And also the Mediterranean, here we see huge differences. And here it's really, I, I, I know Israel, I know how different it is from Greece, or what was the other one? Spain. Oh, Spain. I mean, yes, you can say we are more family oriented, but not really. In 2010, very different economic <laughs> situation. Um, so I really have a hard time to interpret the results. So the same thing you can say about the Eastern, right? With the Czech and Russia and the other countries that I worked in the same place. But you can definitely see the trend here that people are either satisfied or, in this case, the data show, want to work more. There is a shortage of work hours, it seems, from this data in this case. So that's why the larger group, the red one here, special women report that they don't have enough um, work, basically. Okay? Okay. I'm getting there. This is one last one before I get to the results, the multi-level results, right? I have to first show the, or you don't have to say that you want to see, but I had to do it, right? Uh, all the comparison of model feed statistics, right? Different measures, uh, uh, different um, indicators of um, um, what's the best model. And you can tell based on, I mean, it's, it's you can see that everything is quite similar, but um, the big, right? We want it to be as lower as possible. This is the one who punish us for, like, our um, swear adjusted, right? Where it's, the model is too complicated, uh, not good. So there are not other differences, but based on this measure, I decided to use just the second model, which is the, that has um, the uh, individual level control variables and um, just the regimes, not the other um, country level measures. Okay? <laughs> and basically it makes sense because if you take into account the regime, it's supposed to reflect on 
when you use, you use the, the specific um, practices, right? Here it comes, the data. How much time? <laughs> Well, it's 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, cool. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Good. <laughs> uh, so, odds ratios for multi level, multi nominal analysis, predicting preferences for reducing working hours for self and partner by gender, of course, separately from men and women. And the comparison groups, right? We have two. First, uh, the one you see here, I compare the results to the near traditional couples. Just a reminder, these are couples where the wife works part time, less than 30 hours, and the husband's working between 30 to 45 uh, hours. So that's the comparison group. And w when I'm talking about the uh, dependent variable, the omitted group here is where uh, this should be both to, to reduce. So the comparison group is those that don't want to reduce, that are either satisfied or want to work more hours. So, <laughs> my hypothesis um, was that based on, okay, no, no, I'm not going to use my hypothesis first. Odds ratios, if it's above one, right, they want to, this is like a quiz. <laughs> um, Thank you. They are more likely to want to reduce the work hours, yes. It's, but that's the case, right? So if um, it's above one, <laughs> it means they are uh, more likely to uh, want to reduce the workers, meaning they feel more of the time squeeze. Okay, it's easier to, I guess, to understand it this way. And if it's less than one, of course, they uh, the other way around. So um, it's easy to see where. Um, if you are working um, dual earner and the husband is working very long hours, uh, so the wife says, I want to reduce my work hours, I want my partner to reduce my work hours, or there are couples who want to uh, reduce both of their work hours in comparison to couples who don't want to reduce their work hours. Sorry about that. It's really long sentences here to <laughs> interpret the results. Um, so it makes sense, right? If you're working more hours, you prefer to work less. But where comes my hypothesis uh, about the gendered division and the gendered expectation about men and women? So I highlighted the dual career as an example of that, a very clear example of that. So what do we see here? So in comparison to neo-traditional couples, couples in dual career, where they're both working and the husband in this the dual career works the same number of hours as he works in the neo-traditional, right? Just remember that. The husband is working the same number of hours. The only difference is that the wife here works less than 30 hours. And in comparison to these groups, we see that the wife works to um, work fewer hours, okay? But she doesn't want to reduce the work hours of her spouse <laughs> or both. Similarly, the husband says, no, I don't want to work less in comparison to couples in neo-traditional hours. And I want my partner to work fewer hours. I want them to be more like the neo-traditional couples or other, couple, other uh, men who say, I want to reduce both of them. So, <laughs> what does it mean? Everybody would like to be like in new traditional. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, first of all, I think it's an idea. I mean, we all want to work few hours. First of all, I think that's the main thing. <laughs> Even before I get to the gender point, I think it, Europe su suggests that no matter how many hours they work or don't work, because the average number of hours is not that high, they want to work less. Men and women. <laughs> So that's one point, I think, from the 2010 data. But then if you look at the gender point, is that they want to go to something that is, is not possible, right? I mean, economically or, or even culturally, they might not prefer that. I mean, that's debatable. We can talk about that. But basically, they want to go back to, a, or, or not back, or to a, a, a pattern where organization would prefer to see 
even symbolically, a male uh, working with no obligations and the wife working a few hours makes sense and they'll feel in this situation less um, time squeezed. I don't remember the control variables, but have you control all the income, also the income of the uh, families? Yes, and their professional status, yeah. and then the kids, and not that there are many, but <laughs> kids as well. Um, and I can show the graph, uh, the, the slide again. So that's in relation to uh, the, the first hypothesis um, that they would prefer to be in a more new traditional relationship that strategy would make both the husband and the wife less stressed about work about life um, even in comparison to couples where they both work 30 to 45 hours not not long hours and here it's very clear in in uh, relation to my other hypothesis here is the social democrat is the comparison group and we see that in relation to that more developed uh, work family regime, liberals and uh, other uh, in the conservative are uh, more likely to say they want to reduce their work hours in comparison to people in social democrat countries. So that's again the hypothesis I had. What about Eastern Europe? You see what's going on here? So here is the opposite trend that in comparison to social democratic countries people want to uh, people say they prefer they are less likely to prefer to work a few hours okay that's, that's the only way we can interpret the results which might suggest that they want to work more hours it's really hard to say because they're, they're, they're this hard to interpret or maybe you have ideas and we're looking forward to it. Conclusions. Okay. Here I'm sure, sure. How do you measure household income? Total household income. Yes. Besides the respective country, okay. Yeah. So it's a relative income within a particular Yes, country. yes. Here I made a distinction. Sometimes I did the grant mean or the group mean, depending on what's more important in this case. And then the grant mean, of course, is... And would it be more appropriate to control for the differences between incomes, between male and female incomes? Because it plays a great role. What am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. Which one to press? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea. Remember tomorrow. <laughs> he, does, he has to remember. Uh, I'm sorry, the question again? Yeah. I think that when you, when you want your partner to reduce the hours, you have to take into account this uh, dimension of income. income. Yeah. Yes. So, that's not in the question. It, would be, in the question. it would be more appropriate to to control for, for example, differences. Relative earnings within the yeah, 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 the male and female difference. I mean within the within one family, yeah, of oh, income. I did that in the other study I showed. The other study I said that's already published uh, with the uh, Sapna from Haifa University. We actually examined that as another strategy. Uh, that's something I wanted to check. Uh, and it didn't have any influence on the results. It's the same data state, but no, no differences between the individuals based on relative earnings. But it, it's very important, very interesting. I'm very really interested in this relative yes, earnings. Because I can imagine that when my husband earns like very low money, I don't want him to raise the hours because right. I'll send <laughs> you the paper. Yeah. I'll send you the paper. <laughs> It's interesting, yes. That's what I, I thought too, yeah. But this one was too complicated to include that and uh, the other thing, but um, from the previous study I knew it wasn't, it, it didn't have any association with preferences. So, pa -pa -pa. conclusions. Many couples are dissatisfied. If we look at the, the, the again, uh, taking a couple perspective, not happy. 
want to work fewer hours. Both uh, couple level and country level determinants, as we just saw, are associated with the preferences. Interestingly, or not interestingly, similar patterns emerge from men and women with regard to a gendered family uh, pattern, the new traditional. And this is an interesting question here I put in, in, in the in parentheses. In comparison to couples in social democrat countries, as we just saw, couples in liberal and conservative countries experience the time space. But what about Israel, the Czech Republic? What about the others? What does it mean? Um, again, maybe it's experiencing not a time squeeze, but an economic squeeze. It's something that we, we should consider and then look in more into it, I think. The importance of adopting a couple level perspective, I hope I, I convinced you to um, try that. I think you get published <laughs> if you do. Um, and it's interesting to look at the same data, but differently and, and get more depth, more um, complex and interesting um, insights. I think it's important to look also, okay, my Phyllis Moen was my, one of my advisors, and so <laughs> I leave the life course perspective. I think it's really important to adapt it. And also, uh, in this case, as I showed, also to take the comparative uh, perspective together. The out, okay, the outdated institutionalized nature of work and career path prevent men and women from realizing their preferences. That's, that's basically the conclusion. And the solution is other research I do where I think this is what we should do, change the culture of the workplace, change policy. That's what we need to do to help families realize, be happy <laughs> ever after. Um, work family policies, again, that's another claim I make here, mainly challenge the gender division of labor at home, right? I mean, those kind of policies help women leave the house, go to work, um, but again, I think that the state can do more and organizations to change those practices and the norms themselves in order to, to do it. And it's, um, I'm doing now a study, maybe if you want to, I can talk about it later with the Israeli um, military, the IDF, to change those. And if we can change that in the military, <laughs> the most structured bureaucratic organization, maybe there is hope for other organizations as well to change some of these uh, norms. Do I have time? Or just go back, go to the limitation, of course. <laughs> it's cross-sectional with all, you know, what it means. And um, hopefully, the next study could be <laughs> with the longitudinal study, uh, data. Um, again, here I just looked at the uh, dual uh, earner couples, but there are other types of families. There are other types of strategies. As I said in another paper, I'll also look at the professional status and the relative earnings as strategies that family use to um, to feel less or more. Of the, I mean, they try to, to feel less time squeezed, but um, whether they are effective or not, that's in a do different papers. And again, the problem is that they're not reduced, I mean, it's the problem, but <laughs> I couldn't really address it in this paper, that the not reduced category uh, include, included both couples that are satisfied and those that prefer to increase work hours. So that's again for other um, research. I'll finish with that. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have time for a question? Yes. So thank you very much for an interesting work. And uh, I was actually wondering about one thing. Uh, at one point, you were showing just descriptive statistics, and you showed that in Scandinavia, there was lower percentage of women who wanted to reduce, comparing to post-communist countries. Right. One other thing is that in Scandinavia, 
a very high proportion of women is already working part time. Right. And there is basically no part time jobs available. And this actually made me think about it. It's if you do not have the baseline from which you are reducing, it's very difficult to do such study. And so the, the baseline. The baseline, what? because if you have already part time job, you may not want to reduce because you have already reduced. And if you have a full time job. So, and I think, uh, in a way, do you basically treat these women in, a, in being a very, uh, like, in the same situation? And I think maybe the way how to cope with it is that when you are doing this uh, categorization, like the normal work is 30 to 45, it's a very broad category. Because yes. if a woman who works yes. 30 hours and he works 44 hours, he works basically uh, of, 50% higher more, but you have them as higher. But I think because we are using the categories, not the number of hours in the analysis, you could actually adjust it for each country to see what's actually part-time job in the country. Not, not to use this kind of very broad categories for everybody else. It will be more work for coding. I know. Ah, I did so many. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you, then you can really control whether they are already like in this new traditional couple. This would be my suggestion. It's more sensitive what you're suggesting. Thank you for, for, for the suggestion. Thank you. Um, I, 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 but broadly, I think what I was really surprised to find that even those that are in part time still want to work a few hours. <laughs> That's what's really interesting here. Like everyone wants to work less than what they're working. Even if it's long hours or not long hours. So the time squeeze is not a problem of those who's working 50 hours per week. Like we Israelis, that's, we are the worst country, developed country, that the number of uh, average hours per week is the highest. Other than, I think it was Turkey and, and uh, one other country. But um, it's, it's, it's a huge problem because of the ramification. I mean, consequences of this kind of feeling going with it that we, I, I work too much and I want to work a few hours. I, I just, I there couldn't be one of the possible explanations for, for why majority of people claim they would like to work a few hours. Simply they do not uh, like really stick to the quest, to the the question, or learning of question, because, you know, it's nice to work less and still to have uh, the same salary, but if, even if you ask, if, if, if you work people that you, less, you, uh, you less. if you work less, you will get less money. That's how the they question might was just, I don't know, you might just think that, you might just remind, remind the first part of the question. Maybe. <laughs> And if you can do it differently, and, and we can... Um, there was one study where he used uh, different data sets where it had that part, and the one who doesn't, didn't have that part. That's the only thing I can remember right now. But I think this, this anyway, the, the way it is framed is more correct than not saying at all. Yeah. That same. So hopefully they did have in mind the idea that it's not just ideally I want to work less, and that's it. Because the question was, I don't remember the exact word, but it was clearly, it's gonna, uh, you're going to earn less if you do. So if it wasn't, I think the result would show us even that people are more interested to work a few hours. So the time squeeze would even look like a bigger problem than it is from this data. Yeah. yeah. But if it's possible just, to put in the, European, the next European social survey, what questions, that would be another great paper. <laughs> but I'm just wondering why people... If there's some people who can do that. <laughs> I'm just wondering why, why people simply do not work shorter hours. Everybody wants that. They could afford that. Or ma okay. well, many, many of them could afford that. And they do not do that. So maybe there is some other problem. They maybe They maybe would be willing to sacrifice some some income or their, their incomes could be reduced slightly but they simply couldn't do that because the employers maybe would see them as somebody who is not
uh, in proper, and if I lost job completely, and it would not, not be a just reduction, and it would be unemployment, a big problem, so no mortgage, bonus, and, no uh, promotion, yeah. no praise. Yes, that's that's what I'm claiming. Yes, that's that's where I think we need to make the changes because you might want to work fewer hours and you might afford it, but you also like your your job. <laughs> And then above that, there is, of course, the gender picture, where women face different pressures than men at the workplace. Are there any more questions? Something more to discuss? Maybe one more suggestion. I think yes, as data have also a question about the income satisfaction. Whether you are satisfied, whether you think that your household... Yes, 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 I'm trying to think if, we, if I tried it. <laughs> because I think it would be nice um, to see whether yes. actually when you are already satisfied with yes, your income. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll check exactly. Yeah. Yes, I think that's important. Yes. Thank you. Right, and so and thank you. Oh. <laughs> This uh, situation was specific because of uh, the 2010, because it was the economic crisis, so probably... That, that's exactly, I think I was so surprised because it was 2010. Yeah. And the question was framed as correctly as possible and still we, we see these results. That's quite amazing, yes, to, to understand where we stand. I don't know about today, but especially then. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'll be happy to get other feedback later or send you some of my, my papers. And thank you again for having me. And I'll be here tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to do a, <laughs> a spiel for my husband. He's <laughs> coming tomorrow. As long as you do it dually. No, we're not doing it dually. <laughs> But that's, that's an example where we, we both teach. So when the kids were small, we, had, we tried to, to really manage the, the teaching days differently. So every, you know, if a, a kid is sick, so I didn't work on Monday, and he didn't work, I mean, and then I taught on Monday. And that's how we adapt <laughs> to, to the situation, to, the, to, to our uh, Profession. <laughs> would, you, would you consider yourself a dual career model or long hours? No, good question. Long, long, or long, long? <laughs> Depends. Depends. <laughs> okay. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.